For the lab today, we'll be comparing experiment to theory for the natural response of a series RLC circuit. Recall that for the natural response, there's energy stored in the circuit, and then something happens to dissipate that energy. So here we have a capacitor and an inductor and a resistor in series, and I can put a voltage across this capacitor to get some energy into the circuit. So I'm going to charge it up. Um, I have a DC power supply set to 6 volts, so if I connect across the capacitor, it should be 6 volts across the capacitor now. And then when I disconnect that, there should still be 6 volts here because there's not a complete circuit uh, in order for that to, to dissipate. Now I can complete the circuit with uh, here this uh, real inexpensive switch. I'm going to use this alligator clip and when I touch this end that should discharge what's on the capacitor. And we can measure that uh, with a, an oscilloscope. So I'm going to measure the voltage as a function of time going across the capacitor. And now I'm going to charge it up again. Okay, so I'm uh, putting a voltage on the capacitor, so there should be energy stored in the capacitor. And now I'm going to set the oscilloscope for a single shot, and it will trigger on the falling edge um, and re record that. So let's, uh, let's discharge the capacitor. And, okay, that worked pretty good. Now let me uh, show you what ended up on the oscilloscope. Okay, here's the trace that showed up on the oscilloscope. And what I can do is I can add some cursors and we can take some measurements at different points on the curve and try to analyze that and, and see what the frequency is and also see the uh, decay rate. Me add the two cursors, and I'll put the first cursor over here right where it starts. Um, right about here. And actually it says 5.92 volts <coughs> rather than the full 6 volts, so something must have slowly decayed away while I was waiting to discharge. Okay, now let's put the second cursor over here, and we'll look at the delta times. See right right when this one drops. Okay, here's the first peak. It looks like uh, there was a delay a delta time of 714 microseconds from the top to the bottom and you can see that the uh, value of the uh, bottom peak here is minus 4.24 volts. Now I'll move to the next peak Looks like that was 1.39 milliseconds later. Now you can see the value of that peak is, is 3.04 volts. Let's go to the next one. Okay, here's the next one. Uh, this happened 2.09 milliseconds later and, and has a value of minus 2.16 volts. This next one has a value of 1.44 volts at 2.83 milliseconds after it started uh, decreasing. The next peak is minus 880 millivolts or 0.88 volts and that is at 3.53 milliseconds. Now this one is at 4.23 milliseconds later and shows 0.24 volts. And that'll be the last one I do. I think this will be enough information to get the Nepper frequency, how fast it's decaying, 
and also the damped radian frequency. Okay, let's measure the values of the individual components. Uh, let's do the capacitor first. It says 50 microfarads, um, but I'm gonna put the leads to the multimeter across that, and we'll uh, see what it shows up as. And if I look up here on the meter, it shows as 56.26 microfarads, so it's close to what it was labeled. The inductor has 1,000 written on it, and so it's really close to 1,000 microhenries, or one millihenry, and that's a pretty close value. I don't have a convenient way to measure what it is better than that. So let's look at the resistance of this uh, resistor. Now this says it's a 0.1 ohm resistor, and that's a really low resistance. And when I look at what it shows up on the uh, screen, it says 0.177 ohms, and that's still really small resistance. So one of the things I can do is I can measure the resistance of the leads without any connection on there. And what that shows up as is 0.076 ohms. That's a pretty small resistance. Well, it turns out with this inductor that uh, has a copper wire in it, uh, that's going to have its own internal resistance. And also, this alligator clip that I'm using is going to have its own internal resistance. So what I think I should do is measure the resistance. Let's go ahead and and uh, complete the circuit here, and we'll measure the resistance starting at one side of the capacitor, one side of the capacitor, through this yellow alligator clip, through this 0.1 ohm resistor, and include the resistance inside this inductor, and let's see what we would get for that, that whole circuit here. This says 0.434 ohms. So actually our 0.1 ohm resistor is only a small fraction of what the total resistance is in the circuit. So remember, uh, we need to subtract what the resistance was for the leads going uh, to our multimeter.